Welcome back to Uplink, the only place on the internet where you can find out about all the latest gaming news across the gaming industry. I'm Andrew Hamilton, joined by my co-host here, Roy Nogletree, and we are back on that Microsoft Activision Blizzard Whedon Boys, the Activision Merger Boys, and uh, <laughs> or whatever we said last time, I don't remember. Sure. Yeah. Put the hashtag back up, Yeah. Um, we're back again because, you know, naturally this is a never-ending nightmare that we're stuck in. Um, well, not really, it's done. Yeah, I mean, it's done, but it's not done done yet, so we can't stop talking about it until it's done done. I would like for it to be done, though. Uh, but we've got a few details there. Uh, obviously, we talked a lot uh, in depth last time about the uh, court hearings and stuff. This is post that, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some uh, interesting news coming out across the industry about uh, different games returning. And then we're going to talk about video game preservation and the danger that is posed to gaming as a whole if its history is allowed to be forgotten. So uh, let's just dive into it. We'll start off. Super fun and happy show going yeah, on it's today. It's going to be great. Uh, and we're going to try to keep it light and chill, guys. Uh, yeah, so as we know now, Microsoft won their uh, bid against the FTC, pretty much. Um, we're, it's more like the FTC lost, and then Microsoft just won, and then they won again because um, despite losing, the FTC was real not happy about that, so they did uh, what they do when they aren't happy, and they uh, complained about it. Um, and they filed an appeal, and the uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals rejected it. So we're right back to square one. Um, we're basically exactly where we were whenever we first heard about this deal, with Sony being like, I don't care, whatever, we'll sign a deal. Uh, Sony signed a deal with Microsoft for a 10-year uh, plan to keep Call of Duty on their platform. Just I'm, Call of Duty. Just Call of Duty, yeah, nothing else. The original plan was, according to, I believe it was the Game Informer article that you sent me, was the original plan was, or deal that they sent was, we'll do this until 2027 to include all things yeah. on the PlayStation platform, all things Activision Blizzard on the PlayStation platform. Sony fully rejected that. Mm. And basically, it just kind of came down to we just want Call of Duty. It's just pretty stupid. It's, yeah. short, it's very short sighted. Short -sided. Uh, not just because Activision holds a whole bunch of titles, but Blizzard has a bunch of titles that haven't even come to console yet, and bringing those to console could be like a big deal. You know, conveniently, the CEO and then the um, second in command, I believe, at, at uh, vice president of, of Microsoft, Xbox, Microsoft tweeted. You know, we're committed to bringing Call of Duty and Activision Blizzard to more gamers than ever before. Conveniently left out, except for like the 10 year deal that we signed. Yeah. Because after that, who knows what'll, what'll for happen. For the next 10 years, we're committed we're to We're committed all to, yeah. <laughs> Look, we can only commit to short term investments of being committed to things, you know? There's still a hold up in the CMA and the uh, British, what amounts to the it's, British FTC. And, um, I don't know how that works. I'm not smart enough to know how that works. So like it, it, it seems like they're going to get their way and be able to buy Activision Blizzard in the United States. But like Britain has just said no, thank you. Like where they seem pretty steadfast on it. They've said that they'd but, be willing to accept a uh, an amended right. version of the thing, and I think that's part of the reason that uh, we heard today that Microsoft is extending the deadline to October 18th, because uh, I believe it was originally at the end of uh, August, and it's been pushed to October now. Um, and I think that's definitely in service of uh, doing an amended version of this, because as we talked about last time, the Britain is like, or the UK is, is their second largest market for Xbox. There's no reason why they would just turn a blind eye to that. Uh, comment from the CMA. I, I think that they, they would be unwise to do that. Um, and so I I think that we'll, we'll see some form of change made here. I, I think that their ultimate goal here was to get things like Call of Duty and stuff, but I do think that they see the value in the library beyond that. Um, obviously this gives two of the previously iconic PlayStation mascots in Spyro and Crash Bandicoot to now their competitor, which is an interesting dynamic to have. Mm -hmm. Um, it also means that, you know, if they ever do a Smash Bros. game for, uh, you know, Microsoft, they can have Crash Bandicoot versus Master Chief. I'd play that. Yeah, kind of. Um, I don't know. Uh, like, I'm so tired of it. Like, and this is what happens with these cases is that it's, 
it's like so tedious going on and on and so annoying that all of a sudden you're just like, Exclusivity yeah. for these properties always has been, always will be, and they're willing to eat that cost. Yeah. It's always kind of been the play. Now, will this be a afterthought? And in like two decades, we're like, remember when that when that game was everywhere? That was crazy. Yeah, and I think we just won't care. Like I don't know. There's a couple things that have kind of like been pointed out. I don't know, I, we've uh, some of it's stuff we've touched on before, but you know. Uh, People immediately were calling out the FTC for not pursuing like other points. They were so focused on Call of Duty that they forgot to talk about anything else. Because my my value point there wouldn't have been Call of Duty going exclusive is bad for the industry. It's that it is uh, Microsoft being like, ah, oh, we don't release exclusive games really. We release games on PC and Xbox. I'm like, and what percentage of the PC population runs on Microsoft uh, Windows? Yeah, you don't tell me that. Be most of it. It'd be most of it. They have the largest install base in the world for right. PCs because they made that, that yeah. market pretty much, you know. And go into your office workplace, or I mean, if we you're have working... a TV I'm looking at over here, a touch screen that runs. Uh, it's running Windows 11. Yeah, <laughs> like, like that's go. I mean, if you still work in an office, I know most people are uh, uh, concerned about. Most CEOs are now concerned about people even working in offices anymore. Yeah. That's not our problem. But the uh, go into your office building that's now defunct. You'll see, you'll see generations of PCs yeah. strewn about. So you tell me how Microsoft loses by getting more things to release exclusively for their platforms. You know, so that was one thing that I wish they had brought up more. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, like I, we don't know where we're going to be at in ten years. I don't, and I think that there might be a longevity case here for Call of Duty remaining cross-platform. But then us losing every other Activision thing to Microsoft eventually. It just in like we said, Microsoft can eat the cost. We've said that a billion times. It seems like bad business to limit your subscriber base to for this one thing. Obviously, we said there's nothing else like Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. um, so will people eventually migrate, or if they love it that much, will they migrate over? I think in the I think once you make it exclusive in the interim, yes. Mm -hmm. Inevitably, I don't think like the long-term plan. Like you will get the crossover of people being like, You'll "I got the play. initial thing," but I think it'll lose some of its value by going exclusive. Right, just like I don't know, just like anything where you can, I can only get this this one place. Yes, that makes it valuable in some, gives it intrinsic value because I have to go here to get it. It's anything that that is wanted is is valuable. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. like any sort of food that you have to go to one place to get, or any sort of uh, baseball card, or any like any sort of thing that you can only get at a certain place. I mean, art is the same way. Yeah. Like, there's only so many copies of this thing. Right. And I think that's they're they're very clearly banking on it because I don't know. I, I'm rambling, but I just think the initial crossover, yes, will be there. In the long run, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know. It's hard to say, but <coughs> that also. Yeah. Um, I do think that they're probably banking on this pretty hard, um, especially judging by the fact that they are officially ending 
uh, Xbox Live Gold in September, 15 years after uh, the first online multiplayer subscription ever went up. Um, it's dead. Is that the first one? Mm -hmm. I read that it was the most popular, but like, I mean, yeah, I mean, PlayStation I had Network it. didn't launch. I actually, after. still. No, I don't have I don't have gold. I just have like yeah. a profile that. Looks so if good. you if you have um, gold now, you'll be transitioned over. So what the new thing is is called Xbox Game Pass Core. So it still gives you access to multiplayer, so you still need it to play multiplayer. But you also get with the core version, you get access to twenty plus uh, of, of an expanding library from Game Pass. They chose some of the weirdest games though. So instead of like the Master Chief Collection or even Halo Infinite, they chose Halo Five Guardians. They chose not the most recent uh, Forza uh, no. Horizon game. Fallout 4. Uh, Fallout 4. Fallout 76. A game that everybody loved. Uh, but I'm just like, some of them I'm just, Among Us, I mean, I'm, you know? Like, I'm just like, are these evergreen titles that are going to be loved forever? All of them? They gave Fable 2, but not, Fa or Fable Anniversary, but not like any of the other Fables. But Fable Anniversary is arguably like my least favorite Fable game. Um, someone out there is going to be mad at me for saying that, but... It might be Tyler. It didn't catch, I mean, it, like, it didn't catch, like, it didn't, I don't know. It, they're, they're going away from the monthly game. Yeah, so the game's goal is completely gone. Right. So you so, will no longer receive, uh, which is kind of like the opposite of what PlayStation did. PlayStation's like, okay, we're going to keep that benefit, but we're also adding the library of games for the right. higher, slightly higher tier. Um, but they're eliminating that altogether and kind of flopping it. And they're saying, okay, look, we're not going to give you new games every month. We'll add games to this small library occasionally. Yeah. But we're not going to give you, like, new free games. And I'll be honest with you guys. If you've been paying attention to the games with gold... If you've been paying attention to the games with gold over the last year, you have seen the drastic drop in quality that the games with gold library has taken. Turn on your flashlight. I did, and that's how drastic it is. It's gone again. I, okay. don't even, I didn't even touch anything. It's just magic. Of, yeah. uh, I'm just so excited about telling you about how Games with Gold is garbage. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, they've been giving out, like, I, there's, like, one month, a few months ago where they just randomly give out, like, the first LEGO Batman for 360. Not, not like, a remastered <laughs> version. It was just, just the, the 360 uh, version. And I was like... What are you doing? You also, I mean, you get to keep games that you have already downloaded yeah. from Gold, and you get to keep your 360 games, which, oh, thank you. But, like, I just, like... <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. But, like, I... The slow drip of, of content I don't think works. Not but for video I, like, games. Not for video games, and I... I Netflix even kind of figured this out with like their television model too. Yeah. People like got so used to one thing that like I mean people do like the slow drip of content now kind of from other subscription services. But they want the dump for Netflix. But for like Netflix, which they have known for now a decade to be like we're going to release 3 episodes of Stranger Things here and then 3 episodes of Stranger Things and everybody's like this stinks. Like I yeah, don't like it's the worst. people still watch Stranger Things, but you know what I mean? They're like at least week to week content, you're like, okay, well I get what you know, yeah. I'm waiting next week for the next episode. But getting three and then being like, all right, I'll watch in five months I'll give you the three event. and a half hours of this and then be be super invested and go, freak man, where's the next yeah, one? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Like just 25 nothing games like I mean Fallout 4 or whatever. But there's but some like, decent titles in there, but yeah, for, uh, the library that I know they have available to them. Well, you know, where's Skyrim? Where's uh, Doom Eternal or Doom 2016? Well, you know, where's, uh, I'm trying to think of another Xbox game anyone would care about. Um, I mean, the Halos and the Forza. Yeah, and Halos. But I mean, they got, obviously, look, like, they got to push people to the higher tier subscription yeah, service. But it's I also, get that, like, but it's not worth it for what's there now. For 60 bucks every single year, yeah, I mean, you're basically just paying 60 bucks to play online. Yeah. Which is... Not good. Which is I don't tough. like that. I don't like that. They, and there's not a lot of other benefits. Those are literally the only two benefits listed. Uh, like yeah. you don't even get access to all the all the deals. I don't think. I do say for the benefit of the doubt, like there was no reason to keep gold when you have this other. No, especially whenever thing. it was clearly not. They were not putting a lot of effort into the right. games like there they was, were offering. There's no reason to do that when you have just this other thing that like, hey, I we. Wonder what the last games with gold games were. So I'm yeah. Shush. <laughs> 
That's a TikTok, folks. That's uh, it's look, still happening. I don't have TikTok, still happening. and so when my friends send me TikToks, I have to open it in a in a web browser, and then it just plays infinitely. I'm sorry, I'm, I refuse to get on the TikTok train. You won't get me. I'm already in. Um, you keep talking. I'm a no. I it just didn't make sense. It did. It didn't make sense to keep a service that was from like literally three generations ago. So I don't, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't think what they're replacing it with is like <coughs> I, yeah, anything. I, I don't think it's anything. I think it's just a base service model. This for is something. like a really good. Just say. Just say. Hey. It's Xbox Live. Here's two dollars a month. You know what I mean? Like that's what yeah. this is. Don't dress it up for seven more dollars a month. Games with gold for this month were two random indie games: Darkwood and uh, When the Past Was Around. Sure. Uh, worth twenty-three dollars collectively. Uh, PlayStation is currently offering Call of Duty Black Ops, uh, Cold War. Uh, Alan Wake and uh, Endlings, which all total out to like a hundred something dollars worth yeah. of value. So you just weren't even getting anything out of the Xbox Live Gold, anyways. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I, I, it, good for I, you, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> stop dressing something up and for for like a base service model, and like charging way more money. PlayStation's guilty of this too because mm -hmm. it's like the base level model of PlayStation for just live. Features basically, and maybe you can get the free. You get you the get free, free games, games every, month. every month. But and look, though, like we just said, those are good games. But like this, the you're you're paying. It's it's too much for the base level service yeah. models. and it it's funny because we went from back in. We're going long on this topic, but we'll have to wrap it up here in a second. But you know, I we went forever where online was free on PlayStation, mm -hmm. but then. After the uh, hacking scandal that happened in um, 2000, uh, it was free for a time on Xbox too. I remember, right? It was very briefly free whenever it first launched, yeah. and then it went to live pretty much immediately. Um, but so PlayStation eventually, you know, fell to the to the idea that you needed to fund your security division with something. And so after they had that massive hacking uh, scandal. And so they started charging, you know, and um, I was a, like really resistant to it initially. But you know, when they were like, "Oh, hey, here's the PlayStation Plus games of the month. You're going to get those, and that will be because PlayStation Plus had been around. Mm -hmm. They added value to it. But now it's like, I don't know, man. Sometimes, like, if you're just not getting, if you get like three games a year that you like, sure, you save some money. But is it worth the, you know, hundred something dollars a year that you you pay out? It's not most of the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really hate this, and it's become a con concept that's been pushed real hard in the streaming space to start with. That you can, uh, having offered a better version of your product before, now offer a crappier version of your product but charge more, and just say that it's uh, it's it's for this reason or this reason. You know, like, dude, we're not stop pissing on our head and telling us it's raining. Like we we know. Rising costs of what? Yeah, hey, like, pe it's hey, rising for us, but like for what? For you, like due, I don't, due to rising cost store, of like digital Amazon, storage. Yeah, Amazon Web Services. Like, what are we talking about? You show me that graph. <laughs> Never, and that's probably the reason that the actors are striking. Yeah, which uh, we're still standing solid. We're striking too, right? That's why we're during the show. We're with you. That's why we don't write anything. On right, this show. Yeah, we've never written one word. <laughs> it's all it's all off the cuff. Speaking of not writing, Gex. Yeah, well, no, no, first wait. we got to talk about Ubisoft because oh, I don't. Here's, I, this is the one article I didn't read because it's I, okay. You don't need don't to read care. it. Let's just we're gonna read, we're gonna go straight to because I want to get to Gex real bad. I want to talk real bad about Gex. I'm very excited about talking about Gex because there's some stuff in the game, but we'll get to it. All right, so <laughs> Ubisoft uh, is reportedly uh, working on a Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag uh, remake from the ground up remake uh, in order to support. And bolster the sales of Skull and Bone. Hey, Ubisoft, if you make the game again, I won't buy two of them. But also, do what? just don't release Skull and Bones at this yeah, point. Do the other one. Just do. Give me a full. Give me a sequel to Black Flag. To Black Flag. Yeah. I will take a sequel to Black Flag. Tell me what Edward Kenway's like last ten years were like. I'm in. You know, I'm in it. Whatever. But dude, 
I do not care to have a remake, and I do not care to have Skull and Bones. You're not going to, look, they are you push pissing hard. away money. That is. It's, it's got to be bleeding, right? Yeah. Like, that, that is it, it funneling money into the ground, basically, just like hoping for the best. But dude, there's no way this game turns out to be good. No. I can't imagine a scenario where I enjoy the pirate's life it be on this version of the, of the sea. Like, it just it doesn't look fun. Nothing about well, it I mean, sounds it looks fun. Bad. It also looks bad. It also looks like it was made yeah. 13 years ago. I, which is a problem. I mean, I play. I told you because they are all free with the Ubisoft Connect or whatever on uh, PlayStation Plus. Is that like I downloaded and tried to play Black Flag again because yeah. that was, I mean, to me, the probably the best Assassin's Creed. Still game. one of my all-time favorites. And like uh, some of the most fun I ever play, had playing a game. Just the, it, not even a remaster, just, I guess it would be like a remaster technically yeah. because you're able to play it on the PlayStation 5. Anyway, it stunk and it was bad. It, it, it and that is weird. what, and that is what uh, or Skull and Skull and Bones, Skull and Bones looks like now, which yeah. is like. And it looks like it handles about as well as yeah. Black Flag did. And I, so like, it's on its third iteration, I don't understand. Making the same game twice. Like, yes, would I, compared to the Black Arsenal, Flag that we have now, would I enjoy probably replaying it as a re uh, remade version, mm -hmm. as a remake? Absolutely. I mean, I think it would actually probably be really fun. Um, sure. Also, would I pay like 60 bucks for it? No. no but like, I just not. like, it just doesn't make sense to release the same game twice. Yeah. It's annoying and bad, just, Tax can you not do tax write offs? I guess like you movies? can't. Like they just tanked Batgirl because they didn't want to put it out because it would make. I found out this year or last year that you can just nuke a, a, a thing you don't like, right? And and get a tax write off, which is insane to me still. But I I whatever. But I'm surprised to yeah yeah. I don't maybe it's because they're uh, Canadian or uh, French. Depending on where the the studio that is developing it is at, so they don't get awesome. a tax write off. So <coughs> I have no idea what's leading them down this rabbit hole of uh, progressively spending more and more money uh, to, to remaking nothing. something from the ground up to promote another thing. Yeah, like the idea that it would bolster sales at all blows my mind. Unless it's going to be like if you You're purchase sell the skull disc and with bone. It? Yeah, what the, is that dual disc so, thing? They're so worried that Skull and Bones is going to do poorly. They're like, if you buy Assassin's Creed 4 Remake, I will give you Skull, Skull and, and Bones. Bones. Right. You will be forcefully handed Skull. It's come kind of stapled to your wrist with every copy. <laughs> yeah. You buy digitally, we come to your house, we staple it to your wrist. Right. Don't play it though. Just keep it on your just, wrist. Just have it. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't. I didn't even read that article because that headline okay. was so you don't stupid. Need to. It's a report. We don't know if it's true. It probably is. Ubisoft makes a lot of stupid decisions. Uh, hey, Ubisoft, send me an Assassin's Creed code, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please. We still want to cover your games. I just think you make poor decisions. Prove me wrong. Send me a code. Um, send us two codes, you cowards. They won't. They're no. not going. There's no way. We we lucky we get one. Um, more importantly than that nonsense, though, Gex is back, baby. And that might not be a great thing. Like it's 1998. Because I'm still concerned about some of the, con like there's some I was watching, touchy content in there. <laughs> I was going back and I was watching Gex content. So my YouTube algorithm is going to be all weird now. But I, the- All Gex all the time. Yeah, all Gex. Um, the, so it went, the games went from well, I mean, we should say the news first that, that run out of jokes. they announced that they were going to release it for so, uh, all platforms. Yeah, limited run games. Who, if you pay attention to the indie scene at all, they do limited run physical releases for games, but they also sometimes bring back classic games through digital means. And so, yeah, the Gex trilogy of games is coming out for the first time ever on modern day consoles and PC which will give us all a way to enjoy the full gexiness of Remade it Remade with a frostbite engine, which is <laughs> something. Anyway, uh, so I'm interested to see what they do with that because the first one's a, two, a 2D side-scroller. Mm -hmm. The second one and the third one were 3D platformer games. Yeah, it uh, kind of Mario 64. Yeah, yeah, Mario 64. The second one, which I played, I remember vividly, 
having because it was like a free I remember it was a kind of a free game mm -hmm. with the N64 at one point maybe it might but have been it but I had it on the N64 handled terribly but it was fun for what it was and you yeah. got weird quips that you didn't understand when you were five years old when you were yeah, playing the game. Yeah, this is worse than Laundry Day at Drew Carey's house. Right, and like, don't drink the water at uh, Jerry Garcia's Jerry house. Jerry Garcia's house. Yeah. Like, you're like, okay. A lot, uh, of, a lot of things about celebrities' houses that you wouldn't right, know as a child. You know, and the guy that voiced Dex that wrote some of the d d dialogue is a writer for The Simpsons and a producer for The Simpsons. Also so it makes crazy a crazy link. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But the third one, just went for it, was a T-rated game, mm -hmm. had a Playboy model on the cover. Yep. And was and a playable character. And the weirdest marketing campaign of all time. I don't remember that. Oh my God. If you want, <laughs> I'll see if I can, I can dig up some of the marketing for Gex, the third Gex game, but dude, uh, there was a time, and I plan to do a whole thing about this eventually, but uh, there was a time, boys and girls, uh, where video game ads were the strangest type of advertising. They were games for kids, but every ad was the edgiest, craziest thing you could possibly imagine. Pokemon game coming out? We're gonna, we're gonna compress a bus full of Pokemon into a Game Boy, killing all, all the Pokemon, right. and putting them in there. Ah, oh, you just unlocked <laughs> something that I hadn't thought about in years. <laughs> There's a, That's crazy. The Call of Duty ad from 2009 or whatever, 2007 where they were just like, everyone's doing it. I'm doing it, he's doing it, we do it together. And it was just talking about playing Call of Duty multiplayer or some, some crap. Like, there's, there's so many marketing campaigns that are so strange. And I remember picking up a, I wanna say Game Informer, it might've been like an Edge magazine or something like that, but and there was a Gex ad in there. And it was just Gex the Lizard squeezed into the cleavage of a woman's shirt. And I'm just like, yes. This, and it's like rated T for a reason. I was like, I understand the reason. <laughs> like, I get it. But you had, like, so I was watching all that, and I had forgotten how nuts the third game is. It's real weird. Because I don't, I'm not quite sure if my parents let me play it back in the day, but I remember seeing stuff about it. So just, like, what are you concerned about you know, in a full Gex remake. Oh man, there's this scene. I, you know, tell me if you remember the the Chinatown area, uh, because my guy, the let's call the, I, you can't really call them undertones whenever they're pretty the racistism the racism is is real big in that it's bad. He says things like "me love you long time" Cultural a lot. Cultural insensitivity. Ooh, if it's you will. rough. Uh, and look. It's a product of the time. I know that's what people say whenever they don't want to have to acknowledge something was bad. I know this was bad, and this will be bad if it's... I wouldn't be surprised if they just cut that level. I don't think it's integral to the story or anything like that. Uh, hey, bonus points if you can leave the plot of Gex in the comments section. <laughs> I, don't, I do right? not remember the plot for Gex. No, I mean, it, he's, like a, he's also like a spy. He's a, a super spy. spy, right? Yeah. I think in the third game he's a spy because he starts out in his... Very funny marketing, though, by yeah. them to uh, just literally say we're bringing back a classic game and have the golden eye silhouette mm -hmm. of James Bond <laughs> and then it just be Dick X, which is very funny. Which, hey, MGM, if you're going to make new... If you're going to take advantage of, of your all, all your money and your new Amazon backing, uh, you guys should make a Gex film and then market it as a James Bond film. Because that won't cost them more money. It will cost them so much money. They do not care. They should make it. It is art. The market <laughs> for a Gex movie. Nobody would be like... Yeah, can I show of hands? That would make tens for Gex of movie? dollars. There's at least three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would make no money. There's uh, dozens of us. Yeah. So that, I would for sure see a Gex movie, though. Like, I think one of the first down. games that we ever talked about was the second Gex game. Yeah. Because, like, I, again, like, we were too young to, I think, play. I mean, you may have played it, but, like, I was too young to play the first mm -hmm. Gex game. So I think we played, and we just talked about how random it was to have a talking lizard 3D platformer. It's so weird. And the fact that we're just like, bring it back. And then they did. <laughs> I want, the, but it's not good enough yet, you know, because I want the gritty reboot. Oh, I right. want modern day. Look, and this is, we're going to talk about video game preservation uh, here in just a second. Um, but I, I just want to say, out the out the gate here bring back all the franchises you think are dead and just give me the stupid version of that thing give Sly me cooper 
Give me Sly Cooper gritty remake. He's uh, it's he's just a he's a, a like a what is he, a fox, right? I think he was a he's raccoon. a raccoon. He's a raccoon. Kim, cut that part where I said he's a fox. I think she's like an idiot. <laughs> she's not gonna cut that. Oh, she's gonna leave that in there and then put big arrows to the point. It's the idiot. And I've just encouraged her to do right. that now. Oh, great. Anyway, uh, yeah, so he's a raccoon. Uh, make him a raccoon amongst like real world gang members. I would, I would play the crap out of that. Right. Give me Jack and Daxter, but they're doing Indiana Jones and they find out about human sacrificial, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, get, dude, give me anything that is the worst idea back in the day that would be so marketable now. Mm -hmm. I would be in. Give me Gex, but in the Hitman world of assassination <laughs> style. <laughs> like, like, everyone's all like, we can never find him. And he's got to be the size of a real gecko. Like a so, real gecko. So you're yeah, just trying to figure out how to find, you're like, I can't see anyone's faces from down here. <laughs> trying to get so a good stupid. angle. Dude, give me Gex the Sniper. Sniper Elite Gex. I would play the crap out of Sniper like Elite Gex. like Squirrel with a gun, but just Gecko with a gun. Yes, dude, Gecko with, okay, well, first off, great marketing campaign to make a Gecko with a gun and a Squirrel with a gun game in the same year and have them release and fight. Right. Excellent crossover material. I'm saying make him a new Smash Bros. character, but the size of a gecko. Make him, let's put him in Halo, but the size of the gecko. Let's find a place for gecks in our modern uh, society because we need to bring back this uh, atrocity that, <laughs> that happened to us as kids. I'm, I'm all in on the gex train. Oh, anything they want to make, I'm, I'm here for it, so mm. long as they cut the Chinatown thing. <laughs> anyway, ad time. Today's episode of Uplink is brought to you by Bell County Comic Con. Bell County Comic Con is coming to the Bell County Expo Center August 5th and 6th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can come down and meet tons of celebrity guests like Chuck Norris, Eric Estrada, and Joseph Marcel from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You can meet Power Rangers, voice actors, and even yours truly. That's right, I'll be there once again emceeing my way through the celebrity panel. You can also catch me over at the KWTX vehicle where I'll be talking about hardwired and handing out lots of fun prizes. You can grab your tickets at bellcountycomiccon.com and be Sure to use promo code Hardwired for ten percent off your ticket. That's BellCountyComicCon.com. Promo code Hardwired for ten percent off your ticket. Now back to the show. EA announced that they uh, the release date for EAFC, which is basically their follow up to FIFA, but without the FIFA branding because they have cut ties with FIFA because FIFA is Weiss. weird and bad and uh, weird mafia group. Yeah, and so they released a gameplay trailer which was all basically animations captured in the game. Yeah. So they didn't show us anything. Um, there were hands-on impressions from the media, most of which said, it's like FIFA, but not FIFA. People are going to play it. So, I think it may, like, it may have lesser sales because people aren't going to realize what it is. What I'm worried about is that they, they, there's going to be a confused audience of people not realizing that this is still... FIFA, but not FIFA. If FIFA, I don't know if FIFA has like decided to go with somebody else to try and make another they game. They said that they were going to pursue um, alternate licensing opportunities, but they have not announced anything. I, the thing is, I think that, that if EA isn't willing to work with you, that's probably going to, like, because so many people consider EA to be like not, not the best place, which is insane, because they actually they do pretty well by their employees most of the time. Just kidding. Nope. Um, but you know they, uh, if EA is not willing to work with you, that's probably a big a big hit against your credibility in the gaming industry. Well, 2K loves making money, so we'll see. Oh but, yeah, for sure. Um, so like, how many ads can we put in this? Right, exactly. How many? How much? Oh, even someone worse, get Jake trans- from State Farm. Like EA, EA is bad about microtransactions, but Dude, they kind of put it off so to the set. Worse. 2K is like built into the start menu. Yeah. So it's just like. When you insert 2K into your, your console via disc, kids games normally run on discs. I know you probably don't know that, but you you can't buy them that way. Um, but you know, when you insert that into your console, uh, it actually immediately deducts fifty dollars from your account the first time you load the game. So yeah, it's crazy. Um, on top of that, EA since cutting ties with them, they're moving on, and uh, hopefully, hopefully it's fine. Like I think you yeah. know, I don't know, but I think it'd be better. They have a ton of other sports franchises, like you were saying. UFC is through EA. UFC 4 was a good game. They announced UFC 5. They didn't tell us anything about it. We know that a full reveal will come in September, but that's about all we know. It's been about three years since the last one. Which is so. strange for, for a game that, like, 
like Bruce UFC continue is like a continuous sport throughout yeah. the entire year. Like they don't take a break. Yeah, you'd think that they'd want to put out yeah franchise opportunities. But it, often. that also means to me that they like it's sort of they're. they're they need some time for better and better fighters or, or fighters to get more name brand recognition right. other than like the ones that we've always seen. McGregor. Yeah, McGonagall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I don't follow UFC. And, I'm sorry. You know, Francis Ngannou, and who's not really even in the UFC anymore. But Bruce like, Lee, who's definitely not in the UFC. Right, who was in that game for some reason. <laughs> Weird. We talked um, about this off camera like last week. Uh, yeah. You know, John Jones, so on and so forth. But like, yeah, you may need some time for people to like kind of get back on either get on track and like for the sport. The sport is very cyclical with their stars. Right. So it's, you know, it's interesting to see that they have taken their time between games, which I'm fine with. Like, I don't need a UFC game every single year. And there's still a lot of support for UFC 4. Like mm -hmm. they're putting oh, out yeah, there's still people updates and stuff consistent. for it. And I thought it was a decent fighting <coughs> fighting sim, and obviously yeah. it's the best UFC. Sim I had fun with it. Get. Um, I think I got it for free. Like, they gave it for free yeah. in like one of the PS Plus months. So I had a good time with it. I don't care that, that. I mean, obviously, probably if you're a UFC fan, you're like, when can I get the next game? But yeah. to me, I'm like, the sport is so continuous that like, if you take your time making another game, that's fine with me. It's um, not a Def Jam, but I guess it's fine. Right. Exactly. We'll, we'll take it. Uh, just like we would love to take all the games that uh, no longer exist in a uh, place that we can get them and have them again. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Hamilton. <laughs> no, uh, so and I work for GameResellers.com. Yeah, and you can buy all your favorite games for the cheap price of eighty-five ninety-nine a piece uh, from as early as two thousand ten. Uh, but yeah, no. So a study came out from the uh, gaming research group uh, that uh, is all about trying to preserve game history. A whopping 87% of games produced before 2010 are unavailable in any commercial capacity. Not only that, but only like 10% of the games that are available are available across enough platforms that are backwards compatible for it to matter. Um, yo, what the hell, you know? Like, well, what does that mean? Because you go into any, I'm not saying that study is wrong, but what, because you go into any game store and it's loaded with games. Sure, yeah. I, I, from, which was my thought at yeah. first. <clears throat> I, the, from every generation. So commercially available means that the companies themselves aren't, aren't selling them. Um, in any capacity, so like, like they're just gone. They're just they're if if those resale stores ever went out of business, they would just be ah, eliminated. Okay, sure. Uh, and plus, there's tons of games that are produced digitally only that existed on old platforms that no longer exist. Uh, you know, for instance, like any 3DS uh, digital software that now, since the 3DS store is gone, just wouldn't exist in any capacity if you didn't already have it downloaded. Um, same thing with like, uh, you know, famously. PT, the playable teaser for Silent Hills before that game was canceled, uh, was removed from the PlayStation Store. And the only way to re-download it or to have it on your console was if you already had it downloaded because you can't even re-download it if you purchased it after the fact. Um, so consoles that had that on it, with profiles that had access to it, were going for thousands of dollars after that. So it's this push towards digital that's really kind of hurt us here. But it's also the, yeah, companies just don't want to preserve their games. It's the weirdest thing. You look at the film industry, right? Every chance they can to release a new version of a movie or even an old version of a movie but on a new format or even just bring a movie that hasn't been on a format in a long time. Like even if you can't find a physical copy of I'm gonna pick a random movie that isn't super popular or well known, but Quest for Camelot. Um, you, you know that movie? animated movie from the uh, 90s? Nope. It was a Warner Brothers animated movie. Uh, it had an, an excellent soundtrack. It's one of my favorite animated movies ever. Uh, it's about a, a, a blind uh, man helping a, a, a would-be princess to save King Arthur, and also there's a guy and he's all like, and he does a thing. It's very magical, and it's a two-headed dragon that wishes that they were each one dragon, but they're not one dragon, they're a two-dragon head. Uh, it's great, it's a great movie. 
if I didn't have you in that in that movie, it's a it's a very very good good movie. So what's your point? Um, <laughs> it's only available digitally. You cannot find a physical copy, uh, at least not on DVD or Blu-ray or on 4K or anything like that. You can only buy it digitally, and only through certain providers. Um, and so, but it's still there, you know? There's still a way to purchase it. Well, until it's not. Until it's not, which is a whole other bag of problems. Which is something that we were dealing with. Yeah, the, whole the movie industry is now facing that problem too, but the gaming industry has been facing that for years where things just suddenly stop working, stop being available. There was a threat earlier this year from Ubisoft to pull all the old Assassin's Creed games from Steam, thus no one voiding anyone who had purchased the games. Uh, it's incredibly important that these things be preserved in the same way that we place importance on film and books because so much work and art and and messages from certain times. Like, do I care if like Glover 3D <laughs> is, is saved? Not necessarily, but there's people who work their butts off to create that game and they deserve to have their recognition in time, you know? And there's no reason for these games to not be moved on to the next console. It's it, it all comes down to money and time and stuff, but we've just like in our process or in our quest to be, get more and more powerful consoles, we've left behind so much of the games that we would that we love, stuff we talk about like like we're talking about just now. Gex otherwise completely inaccessible to modern technology. Right, you would have to what you're, what you're basically saying is is that you would have to have that certain console from that certain time period right. to play that thing. It's like Which, finding out a movie is only available on VHS. Right. Well, that's great. My TV doesn't support. Right. It hadn't supported that. So there, you know, a VHS hadn't been bought yeah, since So now you got to go buy special technology. you got to find a, v a place that sells VHS. you got to find a place that sells VHS and has that movie. Right. And then you got to find a VHS player. Like, yeah. it's, it's a whole separate aftermarket so, thing at that point. Yeah, the aftermarket of it all. And, in the, you know, them deciding that, like, these games are just going to be left behind. Yeah on those consoles, like the physical copies of them are gonna mm -hmm. be left behind on those consoles forever, is like a tough look because you, we all know that you have the capacity to yeah, the like- codes there. To continue, like, PlayStation in theory, and look, look, I don't know how the mechanics of it work, but PlayStation in theory, like why couldn't you be able to play a disc from the PlayStation 1 on the disc version of the PlayStation 5? Well, they could make that happen, yeah. they totally could. But, uh, it, and look, I will say this, and this is where, as I've talked about before, the medium of gaming is the most unique. This is another case of that because I, there is not an easy solution here. For instance, uh, like PlayStation, uh, a lot of people wondered why on PS4 you couldn't just play PS3 games. The PS3's architecture is such a mystery. The building blocks of how those games are made are not even fully understood by Sony anymore. The people that made the device no longer know how to develop for it. Cool. That's, that's what pushes the problems with the emulation. So if you look at the stuff that's available to stream from the PlayStation Premium tier for PS3 right. games, it's like a really specific subset of games. It's just the ones that they know how to replicate. Because it's not even the original code. It's emulating the closest thing to that but it can't use certain things that were required from the PlayStation 3's hardware to make that go. Xbox has been uh, a big proponent of backwards compatibility uh, since that was their only selling block for a while. Um, 360 compatibility in its entirety, for the most part, with as many games as they could, there were exceptions to that rule. Um, but for the most part, most 360 games, I think a library of 600 plus 360 games are available to play on Xbox One and subsequently Xbox Series S and X. Yeah, and the Xbox, the original Xbox, you were able to play a good set yeah. of games on the Xbox Again, 360. there were some limitations there because there were some games that just could not be emulated, right. properly emulated. Uh, and they did that by running an emulated Xbox One through the Xbox Series S and X or whatever, you know? And I think that's a big part of this, is people wonder why emulation is so easy to do on PC, and yet these companies refuse to place emulators inside their newer systems. Uh, and a lot of it does come down to space, like it takes more hard, you know, hardware in, invested into the system for a good, at least physical-based emulation system to work. But man, Nintendo's probably the worst about this. And I'll tell you why. Nintendo, and a lot of people are gonna point to Nintendo, well, they've got the 
uh, the SNES collection and the NES collection, and now the N64. There's like 12 games on there, dude. Yeah, there's 12 games of, of a library hundreds. of 1,200. Yeah, like that's insane to say that 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 library is anywhere near preserved. They have access to everything they need to bring at least their library of games. Like they, and that's the craziest thing. Not Nintendo, not Sony, not Xbox is keeping their library of games relevant and alive to people that play them. Are they the prettiest looking games by today's standards? No. Do people still play retro games? Hell yeah, man. Well, I mean, I, I did the whole thing this weekend where I had some stuff, some modern games, modern from like two, you know, the, uh, the call it what it is, the, the PS4 version of The Last of Us, yeah. which we essentially don't need anymore. Yeah, because why like, would you with the part one? Right, exactly, because they remade it. And that's another whole other thing that adds on to this. But yeah. like the, so I traded it in, had to get some stuff for an Xbox 360, which I've been playing, because like you, like I've said a thousand times on this thing, I still play the original or the last version mm. of the of the NCAA football games, and the NCAA games were canceled for a reason. Not that they didn't want to keep making them, yeah. that they couldn't keep making them because they weren't able to. Pay they were the people. well, they were being sued. So like. Yeah. We're like, we're just not going to get sued anymore. Due to the lawsuits. Yeah, we're not going to... Eh, like, easy solution here. We simply will not. We simply just will stop doing that. So, like, there is a huge aftermarket, and they still support the servers for the NCAA 14. Mm -hmm. There is a huge aftermarket for those games. There, the, the College Troops 2K7, which I bought this weekend, was $25. So it's like, I mean, with the trade-ins and everything, I ended up paying like 10 bucks for it. So, but like, that's one of, I don't know, like, I'm sure they sold a million copies of the game. Yeah. But that's it. Oh, yeah. So like, it obviously ceases like- to exist after that. Well, obviously they probably have in a vault somewhere. Yeah. Like, like you keep all your old film stock. No, but like- That's I, the craziest thing about all this is not only have they mismanaged this property or these, you know, IPs uh, in keeping them relevant and bringing them to us, uh, you know, in a, in a way that they can, but some of the stories, the whole sheer horror stories of how poorly kept code and ideas are, like, you may have heard about this or you may not have, but a few years ago there was an auction, and in that auction someone got a hold of a hard drive that contained the original SpongeBob SquarePants Advanced uh, code, uh, which included uh, files that were on the, the game cartridge, because this was a uh, Game Boy Advance uh, game, uh, which had like that, like these animation sequences where SpongeBob was like yelling F you and, and all this other like, you know, crass stuff. And I'm just like, Dude, if I was the company that made that, no way I'd let that get out there. Right. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why are you not keeping up yeah. with your your inventory, man? I don't know, but there's a whole nother thing, nother. There's a whole separate- A whole nother thing. A whole nother thing. There's a whole separate mm -hmm. piece of this that you're seeing in the film and TV industry, <coughs> and that it, goes, it coincides kind of with the streaming version of these games, is that if they decide, and the gaming industry is a little different because it's like, obviously it costs money to store that game and we were making fun of, uh, making fun of Peacock for upping their server space, but it I does cost- no one has Peacock. It, yeah, like it, it costs money to store stuff, we get that. Ask like, your friends if they have Peacock. They do not, they're right. lying to you if they say yes. Um, so- Get better friends. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't know, the gaming industry hasn't done this, what they're doing is that they just haven't uploaded the stuff. Yeah. The film industry is actively taking things away yeah. that they had uploaded because we don't want to pay on it anymore. Yeah. Now, the gaming industry doesn't quite get residuals for their work. I have, I'll be honest with you, no one really knows, outside of the, the right. game industry, really knows how uh, video game residuals work, if there are any. Right. Uh, I just know that you typically get paid the one time and then you get a bonus if it reviews well in a lot of cases, but yeah. yeah. <sighs> so like the film industry, and this would be a problem if in fact the gaming industry started doing this, is like, oh, we're, we're taking Crash Bandicoot away or what, what have you. Yeah. Uh, 
it it may or may not be back. You know what I mean? Uh, well, they what have the, done that. Yeah, yeah what that, the film industry is doing actively is like we're going to take this thing that we don't like that like we don't want to pay on anymore and just erase it from history. Yeah. So now like there's just not. I mean, and of course there is physical media for stuff that comes out in theaters, but for streaming direct movies only, yeah, those just are gone. They just obliterate them. Yeah. And so they, like, they don't even have to keep them for posterity if they don't want so to. So, like, say if they didn't want to pay on Extraction and Extraction 2 anymore. Delete it. Yeah. Like, movies that a lot of people really like and are, like, really Red no good. Red Notice. Everyone's yeah. watching Red Notice. Yeah, that one, sure. The, the movies that are, like, 2020 action classics at this point, they're just gone yeah. forever. And you don't have that. The gaming industry hasn't started doing that, but I wouldn't put it past them if they found out, a, like, we don't have to store this anymore. Not a lot of people are playing it. Get rid of it. Yeah, like I said, they have done that before. And a lot of it comes down to licensing overlaps and stuff like that. Like there's, it's more nuanced, I feel, than things get in the movie industry where it's like right. a corporation we don't want to pay on just it. being bad. Yeah, we now, don't want to pay on this residual There is anymore. some of that. But so for instance, I had a 3DS, right? And I'm sorry to harp on Nintendo so hard, but it, they're the first ones I think of when, I come, when it comes to this problem. But so I had a, I had a 3DS. It takes them forever to remaster or restore right. their games. I had a 3DS. I bought the, uh, they had the uh, e shop or whatever, and you could go and buy uh, e shop versions of certain Game Boy games. And so I bought like Pokemon Crystal and uh, yeah, Pokemon uh, Red and Blue. And so I had all these great games. <clears throat> just gone. That is, I can't even re-download them now. Even if I had a 3DS, couldn't even keep them. That, and the fact that that hasn't been transferred in some way, like, here's what's really gonna piss me off, right? If, uh, because they recently added the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance uh, emulators to the uh, $74.99 cost of having the online Won't service. Won't do it, I downloaded Absolutely them thinking do not that do they it. were free on my base plan, like it I've says been free. No, it's a lot. If you are an idiot, <laughs> yeah, if you're dumb. If you're like me and you're an idiot, uh, then go ahead and purchase that. Look, is it great having a golden eye accessible to me? Yeah, sure. But dude, just release it everywhere. Just make it available. Because here's the thing: if uh, I don't care if I have to pay seventy four ninety nine or whatever right now for this shit, but if they re-release the Pokemon games on their own through not this emulation service, and they want $7.99 or something for it. No, I already paid for them. I already own this game. It's different when it's a remaster or a remake or whatever. You're getting an improvement. There's a reason to pay, typically. Like, was I happy with the price tag of The Last of Us Part One? No, but I did play it again for the 15th time, and I loved every second of it because of how beautiful it looked. It was important to me that it got this, this most perfected version out that was great i love that price it lower dude if they had just been like we're bringing like jack and daxter one to the playstation uh five or whatever which they have uh and they're like uh, with no improvements zero zero improvements because the one that released actually has some mild improvements and trophy integration i'm like no i'm not paying for that i bought that game when i was 12. Right. I sh if I have a copy lying around, I should be allowed to just get the game. You know? But yeah, there, therein lies the problem of not being able to play the thing yeah. that you have bought from the same company. Right. On the, and look, technology, like, Advances obviously, you can't play. You can't play VHS on a DVD player. But like. But you should be able to, yeah. am I right, boys? I just. <laughs> yeah, I just think. And I'm guilty of buying <coughs> everything yeah. digital now. Like it's I hate e going. I hate going to the store. If I want something immediately, we won't be socially I'm, interactive. Yeah, I'm just gonna download it. But you know, obviously now therein lies the thing. There's no trade-in value too anymore for anything. Yeah. It doesn't last long. And I, yeah, speaking as someone who worked at both Best Buy and uh, managed two GameStops, I'll tell you, um, the algorithm uh, is determined by the amount of stock. And if a game is popular. It doesn't matter that you paid fifty dollars for it, sixty dollars for it, seventy dollars for it. If I've got seven thousand copies in my inventory, that game's only worth seven dollars. That's how trade value works. Just like car values depreciate when there's too many of them in the market. Like that's just how it works. Yeah, I don't know. I think like I'm guilty of. I I think 
the further we get away from it, and I think there's been a sort of push for this too, like, like Blu-rays and reissues of Blu-rays and the Criterion Collection and all that mm -hmm. is there's like a, I'm not saying it's like a huge market, but there is a big market yeah. for people and collectors of that stuff, like their records or something. But like, be. but like, it, it is interesting where we are with like, yeah, you just, yeah. we're, we're talking in circles. Of, you can't play. I games. don't know what the solution is. You can't play games from the past or they're just not available or they're buried in the desert like the uh, uh, E.T. game. But um, you know the story, but you're yeah. looking black. Yes. Okay, I was like, you know the story of that, right? Yeah. I am Look that up. If you don't know, there's a aware of the Atari E.T. game that is, is slash was buried in the desert. And you kind of see like there's like a weird... Almost, you know, the the children yearn for the arcade, but like, yeah, there is like a weird push to like going back to like analog arcades and things yeah. like that. Yeah, well, yeah, arcade bars. Yeah. So I I talked about this a little bit with uh with my brother, but arcade bars have made like a huge like swing, and it's paid off because having these arcade systems where, like. When you were a kid, you were just going there for the games. Now you're going there to get drunk and right. the and, games. And the thing, and the nostalgia. And a lot of times, you just pay $15 to get to the door, and you get unlimited access to the games. Yeah. We went to one in, in Austin that was a blast. They had, like, 57 games, you know, different uh, games and stuff, and they had, like, a Guitar Hero, like, stage and stuff yeah. with the arcade version of Guitar Hero. It was awesome. But people were there to drink, get crazy. And play some arcade games. And, like, that, if that's not showing you that there's some market level for this, I don't know what is, because those things are popping up, like, everywhere now. I mean, somebody somewhere is doing the cost-benefit analysis of making all of these... Which, uh, shout-out to our sponsor, BitBar. Uh, <laughs> somebody is making a cost-benefit analysis of making all this stuff cross-compatible and, and, yeah. and remastering all these games and how we store them and yada, yada, yada. Like they, I think it's a lot of they that. They know more than what we know, but it, but, like... What percentage of the pie like, is the profit is what yeah, they're worried about. They're concerned about whether or not they can take an old game, and if it's popular enough, they would remake it. If it's not that popular, they would re-release it, but still charge you for it. And if it's really just kind of like an old game that people, a few like hundred people or whatever might care about, streaming service, you know? Like, we're not going to get physical copies of these games. No way. No way they're paying, like, cost production for, for game development, uh, for uh, mass production of video games is too high. Yeah, like, I don't think, you know, will you ever be able to find a, find a physical copy of Stray? Yeah, yeah, limited uh, run games is going to do one. Yeah. Oh, Aside I mean, from that. Like, oh, I didn't know that they were going to do that. Yeah, I'm just thinking so, of the most popular streaming games. But there, there are, like, there's a lot of games, like, like there's, you know, not normally a physical copy of Among Us. Uh, they did do one eventually, but those were limited quantities, so those will eventually be gone too. There's a lot of games out there. Like, okay, so, and, and this goes for failed games too, and this is kind of a, a unique situation with this one, but Lawbreakers was Cliff Blazinski, who previously made the Gears of War series. Uh, his new team put out this shooter I loved a bunch uh, called Lawbreakers. Uh, it released PlayStation only, digital only. Unfortunately, didn't find an audience. It was multiplayer only. Uh, they had planned to add campaign stuff later along the lines, but they were developing the game actively while they were putting it out. And it failed. Lawbreakers is gone. It does not exist. You cannot find it. I, I purchased it for $30. Cannot download it. Can't do anything with it. Nothing I, I, I did in the game matters. It's just gone. Because they can just do that. They can just, like, I get it's an online game. It had bots in it. It could have, it you know, the life could have been kept going somehow. But... It's just so crazy to me that we've lost 87% of gaming history, essentially. Now, that's not to say you're going to be watching this, and we just talked about it in the beginning, but like if you were going to be watching this and being like, well, I can go find... Yeah, of course you can go to a resource. I can go find... find I don't even know what, what a game... Like, I can go find every rock band ever, yeah. and there's like people that have preserved those games and yeah. collections. There, and are, there is that out there, but the fact that I can't log onto Steam or into my PlayStation or Xbox or whatever and just find access to the full library of games that have been created is pretty disheartening. And like, 
you can't do that with every streaming service, but dude, places where you can rent and buy uh, movies and stuff typically have most everything that you can think of. Yeah, you can go to Blu-ray.com or whatever. I think when you I looked up, find. when I was looking into it, like only like 20% of movies are missing. Yeah. It's a pretty low amount comparatively. Now, and what it will, what it would take, I think eventually too, is like there's a whole, not cottage industry, it's a huge industry of film preservation. Mm -hmm. There's a whole society of film preservation. And we're getting there with video games. Yeah, and, and it has been forever. And the Library of Congress. Put it in the Library of Congress. Yeah, the library. Put them all in the Library of Congress. The Library of Congress preserves movies that they think are important as right. well. So it's, it's And the first gamer president will initiate right. the, uh, the video game. We need a non-octogenarian president to yeah. be like, hey, can we put Super Mario in Someone the Someone not, not, who's not like a crypto bro who's yeah. like also don't come at me that web 3 is the answer shut up okay i know that that you guys think that's about the digital owner thing it doesn't work like that they can still just take it away i don't care what you say they, they will it's if it's online it's still removable being able I, it is a weird time that we live in and we're talking I, in circles but like being I hate able, this time we live in. well being able to just take away things that you have owned yeah. or have seen before. Like there's going to be, we were talking about this last night. There, like, thank God that, we, what was the thing that I said that we saw? Oh, it was one of the episodes of SpongeBob. I won't say oh, it on this yes. platform, uh, but it was one of the episodes. Panty of Raid. Yes, okay. It was a Panty Raid episode of SpongeBob. It, what, what, it, it briefly it showed back up on yeah. streaming and then was immediately re-banned. And I was saying last night, it is interesting because our generation, we all saw that. Yeah. We all saw that, and it disappeared. You can just gaslight. Like, it, it, like I was, <laughs> this is gonna get really conspiracy theory, but it just it is like they're just gonna Mandela effect a whole yeah. generation of people. Dude, but just think about the implications of all that. Like a movie you releases to a few thousand theaters, right? A few, right. A few hundred theaters uh, is well received. A lot of people remember it. And they just never release it digitally. It doesn't get a physical release. It just right. ceases to exist from that point on. There's just a whole bunch of people convinced of this movie because it happened right and the studio just denies its existence everyone they, they've sworn it written ndas into the contract no one's allowed to talk about it like full-on conspiracy mode for sure but my guy crazy it's crazy weird that they can do that. they have a full batgirl film you'll never see it it's insane and so is the show which we need Where to wrap up um i want to shout out to our uh sponsor I like did a self edit there. That was weird. I want to give a special shout. We'll get there. Let's try that again. I want to give a special shout out to our sponsors, uh, Bit Bar over in uh, Temple and Colleen, uh, Bell County Comic Con, where you can find me and uh, possible others. Uh, I don't want to specify too many people just in case things change, because um, of strikes and all whatnot. the things happening. But I will for sure be there August fifth and sixth from ten a.m. to six p.m. Uh, I'll be talking to many, uh, as many celebrities as can show up. Yeah. Uh, Scooby Doo will be there. That'll be great. Uh, the cartoon, not the not the voice actor. Right. right. No, the voice actor, not the cartoon. The actual like yeah. physical. It being would be crazy the if the 2D like, cartoon yeah. was there. And I was like petting cardboard. That'd be weird. Um, but I'll be there, and uh, we'll also be over at the KWTX booth with the Weather Authority vehicle, and I'll be talking about hardware stuff over there. We'll be doing some special stuff, a giveaway. If you want to win this Master Sword, come out and see us custom printed special just for you uh if you like what we do here you should subscribe leave a like on this video and uh, let us know what the plot to gex is in the comment section i do right. not know uh but until then and until next time i'm andrew hamilton that's where we this is the uplink get the hell out of here stay linked stay linked <laughs>